there's so many reasons why that I felt like I should not call myself a collector. A, it's because I'm an artist. And B, there's a lot of stigma that goes along with saying that you are a collector. Um, especially a collector when you say you're, you're saying you're a collector in your 30s. It, it, it comes off as very, very elitist. It comes off as very, very um, uh, pretentious. There's a lot of things that goes along with saying that you are a collector at a young age. Um, so when I knew that I was collecting stuff is when I owned the gallery in Wicker Park. And um, I had bought so much work and I was afraid to even kind of bring it home because I was like, if you bring this home, it becomes something else. Right now it's a job, this is work and you can just buy it. It's like the freedom of, you know, the perks of the job. If you leave it at the gallery, you're fine. When you bring it to your house, it turns into something else. So one day I just said, I'm gonna bring it home. So I brought it home, we had nowhere to put it. It was just kind of like, where are you gonna put all this work? So I started placing it here, placing it there, placing it everywhere around the house. And I was like, oh my God, can we live with this? And that's another thing as we're gonna collect is like, how do you live with this stuff that you've bought? You have this stuff, these beautiful works of art that you love individually. How do you live with this stuff? So at that moment, I knew that I was collected when I said, you know what? I don't care how I'm gonna live with it, but it's mine. I'm going to make it work and it's gonna be in my home. And I'm going to, and it's gonna be an everyday thing. I'm gonna wake up in the morning, I'm gonna look at it, I'm gonna to go to sleep at nights, I'm gonna look at it, and it becomes these very beautiful things that I've collected, and which makes me a collector. And now I can finally say, hey, I am a collector. <laughs> <laughs> Makiba Kadeem DeBose had curated a show at my gallery, and it was called Beyond uh, February. And it was a all black art show that I did in Wicker Park, which obviously not, it's not a black neighborhood. But um, it was an all black art show and she had found the most wonderful black artists that I had ever seen in my life. Because at that time I was living up north and they're in Chicago. It's a big divide between north and south. Uh, at that time I was living up north. So I didn't really know any black artists per se. Uh, and, and I had never shown any in my gallery. So Makiba introduced me to all these wonderful artists. With those wonderful artists came Diaspora and um, they supported me like no other group organization ever has. And um, I was always, I had always wanted to join the organization, but like I said, at that time, I was not calling myself a collector. And I was looking at these people like, oh my God, these people are the most interesting group of people that I've ever met. <laughs> It was to me. It was so funny how they would battle for art pieces. We would, we would, they would run to the gallery. They wanted to be the ones first there, so they can get the best pieces of artwork. And I was like, oh my god, they're crazy. And then I realized I'm that same person. So I was like, it was just kind of a natural fit for me to try to get into this organization. And um, I still didn't join. I adopted a child and I kind of like pulled away from art for about five years, and um, got back to doing. Art. I had taken some time off and the first people that I called was the members of Diaspora Rhythms and um, they welcomed me back with open arms. Uh, the type of love that you just don't normally get from, um, from I can't call them strangers, but for people who, who really didn't know me but appreciated what I was doing in the community for art. Um, and they just embraced the things that I was talking about and the things that I was doing. and. They were helping me prepare for different things. Um, it's very conscious for you to say, I'm gonna go out and I'm going to only buy artwork from people of color. Um, because I see some amazing things from other artists. But at this point in my art collecting, I truly want the things that is gonna have cultural values to me. And I want my children to see those things that are very much cultural value to me and instill these things that, hey, these are our artifacts. These are the things that we will be remembered about. As long as, you know, as long as all, the, all, of, our, all of our dances and our, and our music and, our, and our, our artwork, if we possess that things that are ourselves, it, it just becomes a stronger culture. We can control what people think and what people see in us. I'm equally in love with almost everything here. Um, just like any true collector, I mean, you, you look at something and you say, oh, I remember where I was when I bought that. Or I remember how I felt when I bought that. Or I remember how this artist was talking when I bought that. Or I really like this artist and their work resonates with me and it just makes me feel like 
I really want that piece of artwork. So with that said, I don't think there's a special piece in the house. They're all very special to me. And yeah, no, I, I can't say that there's a, an anchor piece or anything like that. There is just, it's a collection of things that I love. It is the only place that I can truly say that has, that's by me. It is my thoughts, my thought pattern, my family's thoughts, my family's thought pattern. When I walk through this door of my, I feel like this is, this is your safe place. This is what you've created, your own cocoon, if you want to say, your own shell. This is what, what you are. This is what you want people and you uh, want people to, to take away as this is who you are. Because everything you purchase basically is about you. Everything you do, every, every rug you put down, every chandelier you hang, every painting that's on your wall, there has been some thought process about that. 